Hey, aloha guys, Eric West here, HawaiiRealEstate.org. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm all about teaching you everything, hopefully, hopefully everything, that there is to know about Hawaii and its real estate, but you just can't find in the listing. Why do I say that? Because I am a, don't hold it against me, I am a practicing real estate agent here in the beautiful island of Maui. I've been here for about 10 years, and uh, I love what I do. I love Maui, and... Uh, Obviously, if you guys are ever in the market to buy or sell anything here on this beautiful tropical paradise, I'd love to be your guy. And where am I at today and what am I doing? What am I talking about? As I say at the end of all my lives, I don't know where, I don't know when I'll come back because I, I really don't. I'm, I'm spontaneous like that. But today, I'm over in what I consider to be an absolute, like almost like a national treasure. This is a national treasure. And a lot of people come to Maui, they don't even know about it. So no matter what you do, next time you come to Maui, call me. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, call me. Anyway, check this out. Look at this. This is the beautiful area right by the airport. So I'm not at Airport Beach. I'm at the airport airport, like the real airport. And this is where all the kiting goes on and the windsurfing. And now they're doing uh, this sailing with the, uh, what do they call it? Hang on a second. I'll show you one. It's the, uh, see that little sail that guy's holding? I forgot what they call it all of a sudden. I was just talking to a guy about it and I just spaced out because I, I went live, and when I go live, sometimes my mind goes blank. But uh, wing foiling, thank you. Wow, it's almost like a senior moment. I don't, I don't tell, I don't usually tell people how old I am, but I am getting a little bit older, and I'm thinking every once in a while it just it just goes blank. I'm like, really? Uh, it's kind of scary. But anyway, if you know what I'm talking about, give me a thumbs up, and well, maybe you'll forget to give me a thumbs up because it'll just anyway. Anyway, this is called a national treasure. I believe so. Why? Because if you come here, you'll notice there's a bunch of people having way more fun than you can imagine. Because this is like a playground. This is the, this is like Vail or Aspen or Telluride. This is where they come from all over the world, especially the European countries, because there's consistent wind here, literally all the time. So you can come here and just have your windsurfing delight the windsurfing, wind kiting, foiling destination of all time. But on top of that, you know, the other reason I like to point this place out is this is one of the coolest parks. Yep, that's my little buddy back there. Yeah, I know you were looking. But uh, one of the coolest parks, like, like a city park, county park, that you'll ever see. And so if you're coming to Maui, you can land, you will land right by this park, come and hang out. Or if you're going back home, this is a great spot to come hang out before you leave. I love this place. Next to you know, where I live, the west side, you know, west side, my name's Eric West, so I don't know, maybe, whatever. Um, this is where I've spent most of my time, besides the beaches on the west side. Why? Because this surf break right here is called Kanaha. It's not breaking at the moment. I mean, it is small kind, right? Just a little bit, but right out there is a surf break called Kanaha, and it's one of my favorite places on earth to surf. It only breaks in the winter time, it's a beautiful long paddle, so it keeps a lot of the kooks out of the water, but it's one of the, uh, no offense if you're a kook, um, but you know what I'm saying? This is one of the greatest surf breaks in all of Hawaii, and it's so much fun. But right now, if you just, there's so many kiters and windsurfers out here right now, it's crazy. And um, what we're gonna do on this live, besides just, and by the way, if you're new to my channel, I just kinda take my time, just pretend like you're on a walk right now somewhere on Maui, you're not experiencing you know, the impending thoughts of winter. You're just literally in the surf and the sand. You're here with me right now. We're just chilling out, having a good time. We're not trying to accomplish anything because half of the beautiful part of being on Maui is we're not trying to do anything, right? The whole purpose of Maui is to do no thing, nothing, zero. So on a video, don't get like all expectatious, like, hey, hurry up, Eric. No, man, we're on Maui time. We ain't got no agenda just hanging out we're just looking at the frothy surf and the sand and the waves and just forgetting about reality and just right think about Jimmy Buffett what would Jimmy Buffett do right now well that's what I want you guys to do have your Jimmy Buffett moment and just try to be a pirate at 40 right I mean just enjoy the oh that guy just had some nice hang time so thumbs up if you're a kiter and you clicked on this video thinking this was going to be your kite surfing video because it sort of is but not really but uh, this is one of those things that you ask yourself hey what am I going to do someday when I come to Maui whether you're on vacation or if you retire here one of the things that you can do 
is what this gal is doing. Nothing, right? You can do that. That's totally okay. She's doing nothing. Okay, she's on her phone, but that's sort of the equivalent of doing nothing these days. Um, but anyway, you can do nothing, or you can take up a new sport like windsurfing, kiting, stand-up paddle boarding. These are all doable things. You think it sounds crazy, but it's not. It's totally doable. You can be a beginner at these things, and it's a great way to get a workout, and it's one of those things that you can do when you live here or if you're just here for a week or two. Try something new. Try something different. And I'm telling you, man, even if it's for a half a day lesson, you'll walk away going, that was fun, I got wet, I got salt behind the ears, I feel better, I'm rejuvenated by the minerals in the ocean or whatever the heck it is in that water that just brings you back to life. And or you might turn into one of these crazy guys that's just cruising and jumping and having the time of your life. There's all kinds of people in their 70s and 80s doing this stuff. You don't think so? I'm telling you, they are. It's nuts. Like 70 is the new 40. It really is, man. With the vitamins and the technology of nutrition. and you can, if you, you can watch YouTube videos and just get younger just by learning all the stuff that's on YouTube. So I believe Maui will renew you. But it starts with a state of mind. So if you're ever going to come here, right, now is the time to prepare. Before I lived here, I did yoga every day for like a year and a half straight. I didn't know really why I was doing it. But then when I got here and I started surfing and I was starting to, starting to like balance, I thought, well, that's why I took all those yoga classes. I was on one foot, bent over, and the instructor was like, get down, chaturanga. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Just kidding. I do love yoga though, but it did prepare me. So whatever you're doing, if you're going to come to Maui, now in the future, have that Maui state of mind and get ready for it. Get in shape because you never know what you're preparing for. And it's going to be good, I promise you. Ah, I promise you. Now, just looking at these guys right now, kiting and just doing this, doesn't it just make you, I don't know, make you want to do it or live vicariously or just, I don't know, man. I just like to come down here sometimes and hang out and just watch them because it's really cool. I've been out working all day, showing houses, and I just say, you know what, I'm just going to come down here and just chill out. So I did let you guys tune in, right, because I thought, what the heck. But normally, for me, this would just be like literally an hour, just come down in here and just do nothing, just watch. That's, that's part of life, right, those breaks that you get in between times that you don't tell anybody about you. Shh. Where were you, honey? I don't know. I was just hanging out on the beach. So I do have my little buddy with me. And we're going to go for a quick little cruise. I want you to see this park. So no matter what, put this on your list of places to come one wheel. I mean, put this on your list of places to come check out next time you're on Maui. Or if you live here, take the family down here, have a picnic, join the canoe club, learn how to paddle. There's a bunch of volleyball courts down here. Check this out. See these people? They're playing volleyball, man. It is really cool. It's almost like the member in... Uh, Southern California, South Bay, kind of Hernando, Hermosa, Hermosa, all that. That's sort of the vibe that's going on here. It sucked during COVID because there was nobody down here. It was really sad, but now it's like, hey, everything's relatively back to normal. So let's go for a quick cruise. I'm going to get on my buddy here, and yes, he can go in the sand, so that's really fun. And uh, just take you for a little, take you for a little joyride. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's your beautiful Outrigger Six Man Outrigger Canoes, the OC6. An OC1 is an Outrigger One Man. OC2, Outrigger Canoe Two Man. But they're beautiful little boats of Hawaiian aloha. And this is one of the clubs, and this is where they come and practice. And then there's uh, regattas in the summer where they compete. Of course, over here is your beautiful after the sea session salt removal station, which is your shower, of course. And then down here to the, I don't know what direction that is, what is that, west, to the west, is where a lot of the kiters and windsurfers will launch. See right down there, but look at all that white sandy beach, man. It's not always in Wailea and Kihei, right? Wailuku's got its stuff, Kahului's got its stuff. You know, sand pile, surf break, it's a great surf break, beautiful sandy, white sandy beach, east swell over there. But look at this big, beautiful park. I mean, I'm telling you, when my kids went to school at St. Anthony's, right, it's down there in Wailuku, I would basically drop them off at school and I'd beeline to this spot right here, start making my phone calls. Okay, just kidding, checking the surf, going for a quick surf in Kanaha, and then checking my phone and, you know, but I just, man, this park is so cool. Be careful when you're walking around, there's lots of kiave trees and I've 
stepped on plenty of thorn, so just be careful with that. So I'm gonna get on the sidewalk because I don't want the Chiave thorns to go through the one wheel tire. But, uh, and this is a ginormous park as well. So over here's the restrooms, right? In case you have to go shishi. By the way, that's pigeon for, uh, I gotta take a pee pee. <laughs> the first time I heard a, <laughs> a girl from my church said that, she goes, oh, I have to go shishi. And I thought it meant like number two. I was like, geez, that's kind of personal, right? I mean, who says that? But it means number one. <laughs> So now you won't be confused when it happens to you. Shishi is number 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 one. Pee pee. Shishi. Anyway, that's a new word you learned today, right? For all you beautiful mainlanders, hopefully tuning in, getting your Hawaiian lesson of love. A little bit of pidgin is of course the it's an official language. It was made an official language, so they have the Pidgin Bible, which is pretty cool, called Da Jesus Book. You've never read scripture like that before, let me tell you. Hobra! Oh, it's a really, really cool interpretation of the Bible, but it is an official language. So it's not like you, you can, you know, you can't make fun of pigeon, man. It's the real language. It's a real deal. And I just, you know, love listening to the locals when they talk that way because it's just so fun to figure out. And when you do kind of figure it out, it's like, hey, I understand what they said. That's kind of cool. Just like any language, when you start to get familiar with it, it's kind of nice. So here we go. I think I could scoot through there, but I don't want to get attacked by the, the killer dog. So maybe I go around, brah. Oh, hang on a second. There's a little entry point right here, I think. All right. As you can tell, I didn't pre-plan my journey here, but I might hit some Kiave in here. I don't know. Hope I don't go down. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna make it. So can you see all these beautiful, there's all these beautiful little benches and people come here and they have little fires and barbecues and there's all these these are called ironwood trees all kinds of ironwood trees right here so you're like walking through the forest you think you're gonna like bump into robin hood or something i don't know it's just a really cool dynamic diverse park with all kinds of areas to just chill and be by yourself there's the painters that come down every once in a while you come to this park one day and there'll be like 20 people sitting or standing by their little you know artist easels right and they're all just staring at the ocean and and you can like walk behind them and see how they're making this beautiful um, vista. Because you can see here, I'll, I'll, oh boy, sorry about that guys, I lost you. So I went in a whole different direction. I hope we're reconnected here. But you'll notice the rabid dog <laughs> reading the foilers as they come back. Oh, okay, right on. <laughs> She's blaming the one wheel for the dog. It's true though, the dogs do not like one wheels. Or they like them, one of the two. But for all you beautiful windsurfing Europeans, you'll recognize this parking lot, right? Because this is the center of, of the, uh, this is sort of like your Haleiwa of, the Haleiwa of windsurfing. The North Shore of Maui, Haleiwa equivalency. And it's a beautiful Sunday, the winds are just, I don't know if you can see me. I don't know what's going on here. Here's what I do know. I do know that officially 5G sucks because you know what I think when I had 4G it was better you know what I'm saying G I mean seriously this new internet connection it's just uh, you know Verizon T-Mobile I think they're all they're all bad so anyway hopefully, hopefully you guys are back I don't know if you are but I'm gonna try to maneuver my way back to a better area if you will for showing you this side of the park but I was heading this direction when all of a sudden I got disconnected my apologies, but uh, here's some more of this beautiful county park. See if I can get us down to the water. Look at these little guys having a good old time. Aloha. <laughs> hey guys, you cold? <laughs> Fun little slide. So anyway, what I was saying before is you'll come down here to this park sometimes. There'll be a bunch of easels set up and these artists are all staring at the beautiful West Maui Mountains and Kahakaloa and they're making these awesome paintings right here from this park and it's one of the stops I guess on their tour but you can see this is just a beautiful vista of the West Maui's and Kahakaloa that direction there and in the morning of course this is typically very clear all these clouds right here are usually gone right um, and then as the trade winds blow, obviously this is the direction the primary trade wind flow comes from, which is why this is the windsurfing capital of the world, because Haleakala behind me and then the West Maui Mountains over here create a wind tunnel, basically, as the, as the trade winds blow from the northeast, and it's just very, very consistent wind here year-round. 
and this is the backyard. Typically windsurfers don't start up until about 11 in the morning, so that's the tradition, right? In the morning it's for the surfers, so there's no wind here. It's a great place to surf in the, in the northern, from the northern swells, if you will, in the winter time. And then by about 11 o'clock is when it's the windsurfers time, right? The windsurfers own the water. So it's an understood rule that before 11 o'clock it's surfers, after 11 o'clock it's windsurfers, and the windsurfers and the kiters, they actually stay apart from each other as well. So there's a aloha. It's so funny, yeah, yeah. I actually did some scuba diving here one time, and I had my metal detector with me. I'm looking for hidden treasure, <laughs> and all I found was like 2,000 lead weights. I had a big collection for a long time. All my fishermen buddies, I was like good friends. Like, Those things are not cheap, right, on Maui. So great place, great place to come find lead weight if you're bored and you're scuba diving. But the water here is like milk, like literally milky. And I've heard it's a little sharky here, right? So kind of out there in the scuba dive, you can't see much past your face and you're thinking, anyway. Oh yeah, it reminds me of one story I'll tell you real quick. I was out here surfing one day. Matter of fact, I pulled up with my kids and it was a late winter swell. It was like in March, like bombing, like overhead and a half. And nobody was out there. And I was like, oh wow, like a sneaker sneaker set came in or something. So I told my kids, all right guys, you stay in the car. I gave them their iPads. You know, I was like, just one wave. That'll be back, I promise. So I went and I caught a wave and I, I wiped out. So I'm like, well, that didn't quite count. So I paddled back out, caught the one wave I promised, you know, that I rode all the way in. And about halfway through my paddle from Kanaha, I saw this huge shadow go underneath my board and it looked like a school bus, right? I mean, I was like, what? And I thought for sure it's a shark. I mean, seriously, that's what I thought. And I watched it and it circled behind me all the way around. Then I saw it coming back this direction. I thought, man, this is the moment. It, it's over, I'm done. And literally the th swam up right to my board and knocked me off of my board. And I thought I was being attacked by a great white or the tiger shark. And it did actually get up on my board, but it was a giant, like a, like a manta ray. It was huge. Knocked me right off my board. And I talked to some lifeguards later, and they said, yeah, they're kind of playful. Or there may be the male being dominant, saying, hey, this is my territory. Get out of there. But, man, let me tell you, when I got back to the beach, I kissed the sand. And I didn't go back in the ocean, I think, for a few days because I was like, that was scary. I almost felt like I lost my position on the food chain. But uh, anyway... If you have any stories like that, share them in the comments of close calls in the ocean or if you've had a close encounter with a large animal, mammal, fish, whatever. My other favorite story is my son and I were spearfishing and he shot a fish on a night dive. And, uh, you know, I cut the gills underwater. I was stupid, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take that. I'm going to admit that. I did that. So all you fishermen out there can be like, Eric, you're such an idiot. But I was. And the moment I cut the gills and it started bleeding, I started thinking, oh, that was not smart. And sure enough, within about one minute, we had a black tip coming after that fish. And my son Colton was like, he's very like, don't touch my stuff. He turns and is like, you're not going to get my fish. And literally, he wouldn't give the fish to the shark. And so we stood, stood there in the dark for like 20 minutes, fighting this fish off with our spear. Like every time it came at us, the shark, we would hit it with our spears. And we just had one, you know, one flashlight shining each direction. And um, it was very scary, actually. Um, so how many times do you think we've gone night diving or night uh, <laughs> spearfishing since then. <laughs> Zero. Super scary. Anyway, I love uh, nature, I love wildlife, but I don't like being at the other end of the food chain. When you go from hunter to hunted, very scary. Very, very scary. All right, guys, well, I'm going to get back on the one wheel. We're just going to cruise a little bit further in this beautiful beach park. I want you to see sort of this, one of the coolest walks I think you can do is right here along the edge. Because you see how this trail kind of goes along the edge where everybody has all their uh, surfing and boarding equipment and you can go walk right along this edge. So you're kind of getting a combination of a walk in the woods mixed with a walk on the beach. And it's not every day you sort of get that combination of elements. Am I right or am I right? The other thing that's cool about this side of the island is, you know, the breeze. So it's, it's always got a perfect ocean breeze happening. So it's not like it's... You get, you know, you don't really get too hot over here. Matter of fact, whenever I go surf here, I usually have a wetsuit on or something because that, that wind kind of cuts through you. Matter of fact, if you live here for any period of time, and all the people that live here can attest to this, your blood definitely uh, thins, and so you feel much colder than you normally would. Like, if I go back to the mainland, to me it's freezing cold when it's 72 degrees in the day and I have to go 
walk to the mailbox and it's 55 or 60 degrees at night and I'm thinking this is I'm literally freezing whereas before when I lived there that I'd have been like oh what a beautiful evening now I'm like man how do these Eskimos put up with it so your blood thins when you live here so when you go to this part of the island you know it definitely is a little bit cooler when you're out there in the ocean hey, check out the one wheel just grinding through this beautiful sugary white sand man this is awesome like seriously look at this this is awesome huh isn't this cool man so anyway thanks guys so much for tuning in i appreciate it i hope next time you come to maui you will make your way over here and check out this place i'm telling you if you come here on vacation and you don't experience this beach park you're missing out on one of the coolest little backyard playgrounds and you can <laughs> that guy just wiped out that's pretty funny you can certainly come here and swim. I just saw a bunch of people swimming over there. Obviously, the waters here can be a little bit more dangerous, so I wouldn't go out too far. But certainly, call up your local kiting or, or uh, windsurfing operation. Get yourself a lesson. Uh, come to the beach and play some music like these guys are doing. Of course, I'm going to get a copyright infringement if I'm not careful. <laughs> but uh, Or just pull yourself up on the sand and do what this gal's doing, right? Absolutely nothing right that's sort of the other goal if you're not mr or mrs active like i am just come here and do nothing so all right that was fun thanks guys so much for tuning in i do appreciate it. hopefully that it hasn't been all pixelated and bet you would think being by a major airport right the wi-fi would be functional you would think right i don't know man what's going on with the world today you pay for services they should work i'm not in hana right i'm not in hana probably better coverage in hana but thanks again for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure to bring you Maui. It's Aloha Saturday, so hopefully your weekend is going great. Hope you're staying safe. I know we're all staying safe, right? We have what's called immune systems that keep us safe. <laughs> hopefully yours is doing well. And uh, I'll leave it at that. And <laughs> like, share, subscribe if you think this was kind of cool and you want to come back and check out Maui some more. Love a thumbs up. Take care of me on the YouTube side, and it'll take care of you and me and all the world because... Google owns the world, and I still love Google, no matter what anybody ever says. Google, you're awesome. Other social media guys, Google, you're still cool in my book. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, shall return. I don't know where, I don't know when. Eric West out. Aloha. <laughs>